Hi everyone, this is Ray. Some of you might know me as Tiki with Ray, and today I am at the Devil's Reef in Tacoma, Washington with Jason Alexander. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about Jason's favorite Tiki mugs from his own collection. And you have a wide variety, a wide variety of these mugs. And um, right off the bat, the Shameful Tiki Room. The Shameful Tiki Room. Obviously, uh, probably my hands down most favorite Tiki bar on the planet. Uh, Rod and company there knocks it out of the park. Tremendous amount of respect yep. for Rod. He built his bar with his own two bare hands as well. And I like uh, like how he sticks to the motif of the face uh, for all of his mugs. And and I uh, particularly enjoy the glaze on this one a lot uh, as well. Just feels nice in in the hand and it's a uh, nice volume for holding cocktails. No, it's a it's a it's a great mug and it's a great bar. And I'll tell you what, man, it's like. The shameful tiki room. I, I hate to say it's like, oh, it's the best tiki bar in Canada. It's not, it's not given enough credit, but it is like one of my favorite tiki bars. And it's where I start my blog. And, um, you know, Rod, thank you for essentially changing my life. You didn't realize it, but you did. What are you drinking out of? Uh, I'm drinking out of probably one of the very first Van Tiki mugs I ever got. Oh, this is a Van Tiki? Yeah. Really? Is there a name for it? Uh, I don't remember what he calls something, something skull, I believe. Sorry, Henrik. And Henrik and Van Tiki is based out of Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, he is now the... Uh, the oh, they used to be in Hawaii, right? They used to be in Hawaii. I guess Oahu, the, Oahu North Shore. So now, yeah. now in Eugene, making mugs out of their, their house. I tell you, that is so kick-ass, man. Well, yeah, this is one of my one of my favorite Van Tiki's that I, I, I got. I don't know how I... Two, two of 20... I don't know how I landed this, but I saw it and I was like, I want that immediately, and here we are. Yeah, there's certain and mugs that you see and you're like, I need to get it. I, and I drink out of all of my mugs. I don't care what they are, where they came from. They all at least get one drink in them. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of skulls, the Devil's Reef, you made your own mug. Yeah. Well, it's actually, a, and was this the Infinity? The, uh, uh, <laughs> we call it the Infinity Skull, because if you turn it around in a circle, uh, you'll see the skulls never end. Uh, this was a fun mug and a concept uh, that me and Robin came up with. Uh, and I wanted the skulls, all, all the all the mouths, to share an eyeball. And and I like doing stuff in even numbers. So if you look, there's there's five five mouths and uh, five eyeballs that all go around. So it's like. It's like math. Right. <laughs> this is a big ass mug. I mean, this is huge. That holds, it holds a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Speaking of a big ass mugs, what's the story with this one? Fuck, there's, this is some weight to it. <laughs> right. So this is a, a monk tiki. I forget exactly what they called this one. Uh, bone collector or skull and bones or the bone skull goblet, something like that. My apologies, no offense. Uh, this was a long time, and still is, uh, but I really enjoyed this mug down at the days of the cabana. Oh, if yeah. you can see the top there, you have this huge, massive opening that you could just pile tons and tons of garnish on. So, you know, if you want to garnish drinks, try and find the mug with the, with the widest, widest opening, where, you know, stuff, little stuff like this, sure, it's, it's fun and easy to garnish, but, I mean, you got... Five times the playing field. Speaking of which, one of the best mugs that holds in, in my hand, Jonathan M. Chafin, Par and Clay. And this is the Cthulhu mug. Right? This, yeah, this is the uh, his Cthulhu mug. And this, uh, I mean, this is one of those mugs that, that started me down another path that eventually led to us being here at Devil's Reef. Talk about that. So when, uh, when I first saw that this mug was coming out, um, I kind of, I didn't turn my nose up at it, but I was like, eh, I'm not going to get that because I'm not, I'm not too familiar with mugs and whatnot. And, and uh, this was still in the early years. And a gentleman regular down at the cabana brought this mug in and I saw it and I was like, holy shit, I need that immediately. Yeah. You know, instant purchase, sent it to me. And, and then I just became obsessed with holding this little, this little horror in clay, this idol. And 
It's and, such a cool mug. And all the dreams that it held, and, and <laughs> like I said, which eventually led me here to Devil's Reef. And and what I like, what I like what Jonathan does and, and his art is he hides little Easter eggs and stuff in them. So if you look here in, in the tentacles, you can see there's a little fog cutter glass. That, oh yeah, there that, is that he's holding, and that was the precursor to this one. Are you serious? I should, yeah. Oh my God! And this is the Gilman House mug. That's the uh, that's the Gilman House. So that was mug number two. The, Dude, this is, is this a second mug? Yes, that's the second mug. This is it's, so a second mug out the gate, and this is literally like a piece of art. Right. So th this is the other mug that led that you know reconfirmed that okay, I need to open up a bar called mm -hmm. called Devil's Reef. Well, I got this. Uh, also, one of my favorite drinks, fog cutter. I just. I super like the shape of these mugs and the way they feel, the hourglass shape, you know, you can hold it, holds a nice amount of volume. Yeah, it does. Uh, and I like the, the whole wraparound story and motif. Uh, you have the little Innsmouth Vixen here, who who's eventually uh, turns into a deep one and returns to the sea. And then you got the uh, full transformation there, as well as the symbol of the esoteric order of Dagon. Nod to the Gilman House. Wow. And I don't know if you held if you hit anything else in here, I'm not I'm not privy to it. So John, if you're watching this video, uh, put some comments down below and tell us if we're missing anything. Super, super cool mug. One of my favorites to like I said, hold and drink out of and look at for inspiration. Well the thing that I really love about about his mugs is that it is the it's the it's the crossover between Tiki and Harp. Right. And um I really like that a lot, and because there's they always, they always talk about like, well, what, what's tiki, what's not tiki? But I mean, I think, come on, dude, these these this and the and the Cthulhu mug go hand in hand. Okay. This isn't very far away from the Trader Vix. Was it the fog cutter mug? Right, yeah, yeah. Come on. Hey, gang, we'll get back to the tiki conversation here in just a second. But I want to let y'all know they have T-shirts for sale. They are screen printed in America. The artist is Tony Canapa, and. Uh, they're going for $20 a piece, $25 including shipping. If you're interested in buying one, go to my website, tikiwithray.com, and then there's a tab that says buy a t-shirt. Click on there and just follow the prompts. So uh, thank you very much. And let's get back to the uh, Tiki conversation now. But speaking of Trader Vicks, well, not Trader, well, Tonga Hut. Well, these are from the Tonga Hut, but these Japanese tiles, jade tiles, yeah, jade yeah. tiles, You'll, like any old pictures of any tiki, like any of the Trader Vicks, right. they're just walls of these. All Trader Vicks, the Mike Highs, uh, tons and tons of tiles. And uh, so I don't know the entire story. Uh, John Mulder from Make and Book him did the, did, the, did the sculpt. And tremendous, tremendous amount of work. I mean, if you can see all the, you know, everything goes right through. And from what I can tell that that is an entire cavity to to fill up and use as a flask, which I will most certainly do later. I was hoping, but uh, but and this yeah, is for true. and this is for the Tonga. Hut. Yeah, that's Tonga. Uh, that's for the Tonga Hut. Tonga Hut branded. Uh, if you look real close, right there, Tonga Hut. That's great. Right. You can book them. Unbelievable, brilliant. Whoever Absolutely. comes up with these ideas, what's the story with this mug right here? When I first got into mug collecting, uh, one of the first few people I met was uh, uh, Scott Taylor and Robert Haas from Maui. Oh, yeah. Uh, respectively known as Tiki Pop and Tiki Rob. And uh, this is the uh, the Bruda from... Uh, oh, is that one of Scott's? That's one of Scott's. So Beach Bumps, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'd say what, his art, his right. mugs are so intricate. Unbelievable. And he has just like a little kiosk yeah. over in like uh, over in Maui, you know. Kicking ass, taking names, but another big mug. I like large mugs. I generally make larger sized drinks. Yes, you do. And I don't know. It's just fun, fun to look at, fun to hold something giant in the hand. And people look at that and they're like, "Whoa, look at that! That is a big mug." No, what I love is that tiki mugs have come a long way from the tiki bob. And I love that you had that. There's different inspirations, and you can mix things. But one of the funnest things that I think that you can mix is essentially tiki 
kind of hard, but then like metal. Right. And I remember, I'll never forget, you showed me this Guar mug. <laughs> right. And it was one of those things I remember, I saw it on the shelf and I'm like, is that a Guar mug? And you're like, hell yeah, it is. Well, first of all, you're a big metal fan. Yeah. A big Guar fan. I mean, I am Love too. Guar. I've, I've, I've been, my cousins got me into Guar when I was very young. Uh, Pre-teens, early teen, 13, 14 years old. And they're like, you gotta listen to Guar. They, you know, they're a few years older than me. You gotta listen to Guar. They're the greatest band ever. And oh my god. And and I was like, you're right. Guar is the greatest band ever. And that led me on. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, Thirty, almost thirty year journey of <laughs> listening to Guar and seeing Guar and collecting everything Guar I I can. Uh, nowadays, the only thing Guar I have left is uh, this mug or these two mugs, uh, both done by. Uh, uh, Tiki Farm, uh, Holden, I believe, did the, the sculpt. <laughs> I just think it's awesome. They're like, not only did they make a guar mug, then they made a, an odorous youngest mug. Seriously. Well, the, so the, so there's a guar bar in Richmond, Virginia. There is. Yeah, guar bar. No well, way. Yeah. The, well, that's what these mugs. <laughs> if are you made. go in, is there a guy with a blade that's just like shoot you with a mug? I, I haven't been yet. I, I, I'm <laughs> definitely you? looking forward to making the uh, pilgrimage. But there's a guar bar in, in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, oh their God. drummer Brad Roberts, also known as Mac the Gusher, a uh, huge Tiki fan and mug collector. Seriously. Uh, so so he had these he had these done through Tiki Farm. Uh, this one was done in, in memoriam of uh, Dave Brocky, also known as Odorous Urungus, yep. when he passed away. Yeah, rip, rip. Oh yeah, guar bar. I couldn't believe when I heard that news that he died, and I'll never forget. I'll never forget the first time I saw guar. I mean, I always heard, like you know, you hear it's like, oh, oh there's you know, they, there's blood and stuff like that. You know, there's, there's like blood spurts out and stuff like that. You know, That's true. You're like, all right, okay, all right. And I'll never forget, like the first time I went, like I, yeah, I wore a shirt that I knew I was gonna right. throw away, and like the first, the first song happens, someone gets decapitated, and then like blood just starts shooting from the stump of the guy's neck. Right. But it just keeps going and going, and of course they're making a point to like hold the guy out into the audience and direct the spray. Yeah, <laughs> and it kept on going. You're like, all right, all right, you know. Oh yeah. And then at the very end of the very first song, Odorous has this like giant ass sword mm -hmm. that just shoots blood. Oh, yeah. But it, it like it literally shoots like almost to like to the back of the audience. Oh, yeah. So at the very end of the song, the band's like, <laughs> and he's like literally just like hose hose everybody down. It used to be back in the day you had to get it pretty close, you know, nope. if you wanted to get sprayed. But nowadays, you know, everyone's getting sprayed. You're first song, first, then everyone's dressed in black. If you if you left there dry, it's because you probably didn't go to the show. Yeah, that's how. You, well, my, no, I had like a whole. My skin was like red. I'll never forget. Like the second time I saw them, they had like some catapult. Uh, they had this like gunk that would just like hit randomly right, just. Right. The, the crap. And it would, it would this like the shit like would literally just be like, and it wasn't on my shirt, it was a friend of mine. I'm like, what the hell is on your shirt? And it was like, I got clump. You gotta, you gotta save that and sell it on eBay now. I wish I wish <laughs> I would have <laughs> known. But yeah, Guar is awesome. So, um, that's how what, Jason, you have a very, very fine collection of mugs. And I love that the fact that it, there is like a definite horror slash metal theme to your, I mean, to I, your I, tastes. I, I like mugs, you know, I like your, your, your more traditional style tiki mugs, especially uh, this one here that uh, my friend Rob Haas, Tiki Rob. Oh yeah, look at that did. one. Uh, this is, uh, if you ever make it to the big island of Hawaii in Kona, uh, and you go to the Dawn of the Beachcombers there, there's this uh, tiki statue out there by the water that sits there, and Rob, one of my favorites, I used to sit by that guy and watch the sunset. Um, and then uh, Rob carved this mug uh, out of that uh, that statue, and um, I'm happy to have a mug of that because you know this brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, Rob's so. a good guy. I um, I met him when I was in Maui, and um, him, yeah, he's a really good guy. And uh, I, I, again, is it is cool, right? Right. Unbelievable. I tell you what, Jason, thank you very much for showing me your your fine tiki mug collection. Some of it, anyway. <laughs> Some of it. Well, we're going to have to do another one. Then. Maybe we'll do a part two down the road. But I understand you need to get back to the bar and start making drinks for your customers. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, anytime, Ray. All right. I'd be happy to be on. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. 
And if you're ever in Tacoma, stop on in. Yep. And you want to see any mugs, uh, just come up and say hi and, and introduce yourself. And uh, I'm more than happy to pull whatever off uh, the wall and, and show you and let you hold it in your hand and take it from there. And if you if you tell Jason that you're a bar fan, he might give you a discount on your drink. Or, or sometimes uh, I, have, I have a whole set list of uh, Guar themed cocktails. Do you really? Uh, I might just make you one. <laughs> oh my god, that would be so <laughs> awesome. I can't believe that. I gotta go check out that Guar, that Guar bar. Unbelievable. Let's just go, man. Alright, let's go right now. Right, that's fine. Alright. Hey, we're going to, we're going to Richmond. See you guys in Richmond. Hey gang, this is Tiki with Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more episodes, click on the subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment in the, uh, the comment section below.